Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, Kinetic Motorcycles Mini Z Pullbacks. It's a long name. Now, if you're not familiar with Kinetic Motorcycles, they make a lot of equipment for Honda, Harley, and I think maybe uh, for some other motorcycles as well, but I know those are their, their top two that they do some work on. And they have a whole bunch of sets of handlebars that they have. I know they started back with some lane splitters, and then they did some lane splitters pullback. I got the Mini Z's because I didn't really want to go that high. I'm about 5'9", 150 pounds, and uh, having something that high was going to be a bit of a strain on me and my back. So I figured I'd go with the Mini Z's, and I got the pullback again because I'm short. So Prior to having these though, I had the Bitwell Z bars, which I had for about three years. And uh, they're similar in width. The height difference is about two and a half inches on the sets. And uh, I really like those bars. I, I, I wasn't really changing out the bars because I didn't like them. Like I said, I had them for three years. But I was really making the swap because when I moved the motorcycle from Maine to New Hampshire, I knew I could get away with a little bit higher bar. So I looked at the Z-bars. I actually had them for six months before I even put them on. I, like I said, I was in no rush to change them. The real reason I ended up changing them is because I was changing the, the fluids and the brake line. And I figured if I'm changing the fluids, I might as well just take it off. So I took the brake line off because the stock line is actually too short for these. So that's one thing you need to know that if you're going to swap in the Mini Z's, really anything above, I would say, five and a half, six inches, if you're going higher than that, you're going to have to swap out the lines. So I got this nice line from Magnum Shielding. Took a couple of days to get it because they're actually right in upstate New York as well. Put those on and uh, installed the bars. Pretty easy install with the exception of two things. The mirrors and the throttle. With the mirrors, if you watched the last video, you'll know I had a lot of rocking left and right that I was doing trying to see fully out of the mirrors. This $10, $12 fix actually enabled me to see a lot more outside the mirrors. So that was an easy fix. I don't mind that. A lot of bars come with the dimpling. These have the dimpling. But I think between the dimpling and where the throttle goes, it got a little bit too thick. And so I was actually not able to get the throttle housing on all the way. And it's not the stock throttle housing. It's a bit well throttle whiskey, or sorry, it's a bit well whiskey throttle. And I wasn't able to put it all the way on. If I put it all the way on, they would get jammed up right here. And I had to sand it down, grind it down. I got it as close as I could without feeling like I was gonna have it snap. I don't want these to break off. And I still wasn't able to get it fully on. They're probably three eighths of an inch or so actually extended. You can see if I push on this, I don't know if you can see that, I can actually pull it, push in the grip because it's not all the way on. It's all the way on the throttle, but it, the throttle housing isn't all the way on the bar. Otherwise, I like the bars. I wouldn't say I love them. I do like them. I'm not going to swap them out anytime soon because I got this set up in a way that I want. But yeah, the mirror situation and the throttle housing situation will probably be my two gripes with these bars. But if you don't mind spending a couple extra bucks to get the extenders, if you actually want to have mirrors that you can see out of. And if you want to take a couple of minutes to actually grind down, or if you use a different throttle housing, you should be okay. Uh, I'm curious what others have done, if they actually have different throttle housing and whatnot. So yeah, that's my quick little review of the uh, Kinetic Motorcycles Mini Z pullbacks. I like them, I'm a fan, a couple of small issues with them, but if you've got uh, time and a little extra cash, you can make it work just fine, and uh, you know, now I got them going and I'm pretty happy with them. Maybe I'll take this time to uh, talk about my most recent trip. So I was away for the last week or so in Japan. So I was in Tokyo for work, and while I was there, I figured I might as well take advantage of being in Japan for a little while, because who knows when I get back there next. And I took the bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto and visited a, a family friend. And I didn't really have any plans. I just wanted to visit her and her boys and hang out and see the sights. But man, was it hot. The day I landed in Tokyo was on a Tuesday. Monday, they had recorded the highest temperatures ever in Japan. And it was brutal. And I know there's a lot of guys in Texas who are going, yeah, we got heat. I, and I know you guys got heat. But man, this is an island, so this is Pacific heat. And it was just 
everything was wet, you know, and everyone was taking showers middle of the day because you'd be out for a little bit and you were just covered in sweat and it was just unbearable. Even at night, it was getting down to 85 degrees, 32 Celsius, and it was just so hot and the humidity, it was just brutal. But that's just the heat. The heat was one thing, but everything else was amazing. People are super polite, they're super friendly. If you can say a couple of words in Japanese, you get a smile and it goes great lengths. I was able to say please, thank you, hello, and that's enough to get you started and show them that you at least respect that you'll try. And uh, so clean, so efficient, like everything runs on time. I had heard the the week before I got there, I heard that Japanese Rail had actually issued a public release apologizing to the Japanese public because one of their trains was one minute late. And apparently one minute late for them is a big deal. But uh, yeah, man, Japan, wild experience. I had a, I had a ball there. I, I'm already dying to go back. And if you get to go to uh, Tokyo, try to check out the Shinjuku Harley Davidson shop. It's very small. It's mostly a, a garage with a little bit of stuff in it. But it's a nice shop, really friendly people. Uh, they got some coffee and water there so you can sit and relax for a little bit and hang out. It's a little out of the way. If anyone's ever been to Shibuya, it's probably about a 15, 20 minute walk north up and down a hill and then you can get there. But uh, I walked there in that Tokyo heat and not quite the best idea. I did get a little sweaty on the way over there, but I knew I was going to be taking a shower later, so.